Hallelujah. 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 You know, the first sermon, the first sermon that Pope Benedict preached after elected the Pope. In the first sermon, the Pope said, I urge you, my brothers and sisters, the Pope said, be patient with God. Be patient with God. Wait and pray for God's will to be done and God's grace, God's mercy, God's compassion, God's goodness, God's power will be revealed, will be given. Hallelujah. 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 A uh, young man came to me during a retreat. He was all upset, all disturbed. I asked him, my friend, why? He told me he uh, was the first rank in the school. He went straight to the college. In the college, he got a campus selection. And that meant after the results are out, he would be appointed to that illustrious multinational firm. And he came out in the first rank from the college. He went for the appointment. And the CEO told him, oh, wonderful, you are a young man. We are so happy to have you in our firm. But there's a little legal problem. Nothing much. Nothing serious. Just wait. We are not allowed to take a new person into our company. Just wait. Three months. Everything will be cleared. You will be a prestigious member of our group. And he was happy. He went. He prayed. Waited. Went to the CEO after um, three months. The CEO said, uh, that problem continues. Uh, just wait three more months. Again three more months, an year passed. And that's when uh, he began to get disturbed. His friend who went to states in between, United States, from there his friend managed to get him a job in the United States. And he got the appointment letter from that firm in the United States. And he, with that appointment letter, he went to the U.S. consulate for the visa. For some technical reason, the visa was denied. He said to me, Father, why? I worked very hard. I have always been a good boy. I was an altar boy as a child. Later, I never missed my Sunday Mass. Why is God doing this to me? Why is God doing this to me? All my friends are well employed, earning good money. They did not study well. I studied well. I worked hard. Why is this happening to me? And for a little pocket money, I have to reach my hand out before my dad. So ashamed am I. So disturbed. I told him, my brother, this must be God's plan. This must be God's will. There should be a whole truth. You and I need to wait to pray for. And I prayed for him. When I prayed for him, I got a message. The message came to me in the form of a vision. The vision of this young man standing at the altar with priestly vestments, chalice raised up in his hands. I told him, my friend, uh, very strange, I think, I get this vision, he will be able to make me understand that what that vision is. This is the vision. I asked him, did you ever think of becoming a priest? He broke down crying and he said, Father, that's what I always wanted. I was an altar boy. I, I used to dream dreams of offering mass at the altar, becoming a priest, serving the people in the name and authority of God. I always wanted to be a priest, but after the school exams, I got the first rank, automatically I moved to the college. In the college, I got a first rank again, and... Um, this appointment letter, I went to the, I went to the firm. I could never wait and pray. I could never wait and pray for God's will to be revealed. 
I told him, my friend, God is revealing to you. You have a vocation. But then it's your choice. You've got a vocation. Oh, sure, Father, I want to. I want to become a priest. Today, he's a seminarian. In a couple of years, he will be a prestigious priest of the Catholic Church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. But his sisters and brothers, whenever things go wrong, whenever we get stuck, we must know there's a time to wait and pray. Don't be angry. Don't be upset. Don't be depressed. Don't challenge God. God is waiting to reveal to you. Reveal to you what's God's plan. And God will turn everything to your good. It's the whole truth about our life. You know, uh, stories told of Pope John Paul II. The Pope was praying in his private chapel. And the general understanding was when the Pope prayed, nobody would go and disturb him. That's when the Secretary of State, the second in command in Vatican, a cardinal, came rushing. And the Pope's personal secretary, a Monsignor, was there sitting outside. And the cardinal told this personal secretary, Monsignor, I have to meet the Holy Father now. There's an urgent, urgent uh, situation. There's an international problem. I have to give to the UN the opinion of the Holy Father. And this immediate, I have to meet the Pope now. And the Monsignor told him with a smile, um, Your Eminence, I'm sorry, the Pope does not want to be disturbed when he prays. And the Cardinal said, you need to understand me. It's very, very urgent. And I have to speak to the Pope now. The Monsignor went and uh, the Pope was in prayer. The Monsignor said, uh, Holy Father, I'm sorry to disturb you. Uh, the Secretary of State, the Cardinal, is waiting outside the chapel. He wants to talk to you because the Cardinal says, it's a very urgent matter. You have to give your opinion now. The Pope with a smile, with a smile the Pope asked the Monsignor, Monsignor, uh, did the Cardinal say the matter is very urgent? Yes, that's what the Cardinal says. That the Pope said, ah, if the matter is so urgent as the Cardinal to wait, I have to pray a little more. Hallelujah. 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 Hey dear sisters and brothers, we rush into decisions and we make a mess of our life. We are hurt, we are angry, we want to retaliate. Did you wait and pray, my brother, my sister? What's God's plan behind this? What God wants you to do now? Wait and pray for God's will. There are moments we become so upset. There was a moment in my life when I was very upset. Uh, this was in 1979. I was in Rome studying. That's when uh, I got a telegram from my home. A telegram telling me uh, that my sister was very sick. A sister of mine, my elder sister, she was in the convent uh, from our childhood. We were very close to each other, very, very close to each other. And... Uh, she joined convent. Later, I joined the seminary. And um, when I was leaving for Rome for my studies, uh, my sister told me, Augustine, go study, come back as soon as you can. All of us here are waiting for you. And I knew she would always be praying for me. Now, the telegram says she was having cancer. And, and the doctors gave her only three more months to live. And in those days, I could not call up and ask home what happened because the telephone uh, communication was not at all easy in those days. I was all upset. Everything looked meaningless for me. But then the next day, I had a personal uh, meeting with the Holy Father. Pope John Paul II. I got that opportunity to meet him personally and nothing was 
any more meaningful to me i was so sad i couldn't sleep the whole night the morning i dressed up i went for the personal meeting as the holy father was coming close pope john paul the second was coming close i was very sad and tears were rolling down my eyes and the holy father helped me like that and you know you remember holy fathers uh, english young priest why are you sad he asked me i told him holy father my sister is very sick she's having cancer she's dying the holy father prayed for a moment and he opened his eyes with a smile he told me tell your sister the pope is praying for her and then he gave me a message the message was from john 11 john 114 john 114 this sickness is not unto death but unto the manifestation of the glory of god and then the pope smiled again and said your sister will not die and he slowly walked to the next person and my sister did not die she lived 28 years more hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus my dear sisters and brothers in the moments of our troubles and unfortunate things happening to us we should not imagine we are orphans and often you know a feeling of being an orphan what am i going to do where am i going to turn now who is there to help me a sense of helplessness a sense of dryness sense of loneliness no jesus said i will not leave you orphans i will not leave you orphans there's a promise every moment of our trouble difficulty decision making we must be waiting and praying reveal to me a oh god your plan once god's plan is revealed once god's plan is revealed we must wait for god's power and jesus said the holy spirit is the power from above god's own power descending upon us how do we know the holy spirit's power is in us st paul tells us galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 uh, paul speaks of the fruit of the holy spirit we speak about fruits then paul speaks about fruit in the singular the fruit of the holy spirit is love love what do you mean by fruit the fruit is the manifestation of the tree you look at the fruit and you judge what the tree is if it's a mango fruit the tree would be a mango tree and that means the fruit manifests the nature of the tree now paul is saying when the holy spirit is in us these nine things would happen to us love peace joy patience kindness goodness self control faithfulness and gentleness the fruits the manifestations of the presence and activity of the holy spirit well there will be love in us love that's able that's able to defeat all forms of anger and hatred peace that will be able to overcome all their distress and disturbance when we are disturbed when we are distressed when we don't find the way pray to the holy spirit wait and pray the joy would descend upon us the peace the patience kindness goodness the fruits of the holy spirit it is such as some brothers ours must be ours must be a culture of the holy spirit you know we had a problem here years ago we had a problem there's no milk simple problem right but a terrible problem um, we need milk for the tea we need milk for the children and uh, we were depending on the government department milk department but in this state kerala uh, every now and then there is a strike strike because this is a marxist influence here every now and then there's a strike and when there's a strike well the milk department will be closed no milk i have to announce here brothers and sisters i'm very sorry today your tea will be black 
the children will have to starve all of us were very embarrassed we prayed and god gave us a message and we we bought cows we started a dairy farm you know something good about cows they never go on a strike from then on we never had a problem we never had a problem with milk but then when the cows came in another problem cows gave not only milk but also cow dung very dirty very dirty it messes up the whole place uh, and we prayed again that's when we got a message to bring all that cow dung and put it for the trees here did you go around there you know uh, a boundary is a is a river plenty of water uh, no wonder you were very generous with water with plenty of water and um, there are lot of mango trees lot of mango trees here we brought all that cow dung and put it all for the mango trees in one year time something marvelous happened the mango trees became very active they absorbed all that cow dung all the dirt stench of cow dung and set it all up through the main stem of the tree and then all that cow dung was going up through the main stem of the tree something marvelous happened all that dirt of cow dung was hanging down from the branches as as fruits as mangoes what's a mango have you thought about it what's a mango mango is a round shape and yellow color and sweet taste that cow dung received on the mango tree don't think of it when you eat mangoes but that's a fact but that's a fact what the main trunk main stem of the mango tree could do turn all that dirt all that dirt all that dirt into juicy sweety <clears throat> colorful beautiful fruits you know what that's what jesus is promising us john chapter 15 jesus said i'm the vine you are the branches i'm the vine you are the branches you abide in me i will abide in you you keep close to me i will keep close to you and then jesus said he will bear fruits when do we bear fruits what's the fruits that jesus speaks about jesus speaks about the fruits of the holy spirit the holy spirit love peace joy patience kindness goodness self control faithfulness gentleness we will bear the fruits of the holy spirit when when we abide in jesus and jesus abides in us how do we abide in jesus how do we keep close to jesus exactly as a branch is attached is connected to the main stem what happens when a branch is connected to the main trunk of the vine everything from the branch flows into the main stem everything from the main stem flows into the branch say a branch is cut immediately by a reflex system it is relayed to the main stem from the main stem there's a flow of life sap to that branch and uh, the cut is healed the branch thrives and bears fruit that's exactly what must happen between me and my jesus i'm the branch my jesus is my main stem i in here in jesus as in paul says st paul says romans chapter 6 in baptism we enter into jesus we in here into jesus we become the members of jesus and what am i to do what the branch does whatever happens we immediately send it to the main stem say for example we are hurt aha uh-huh. we always hurt someone says something we are hurt someone does not say something even then we are hurt look at that lady proud doesn't speak to me we are hurt all the time we are hurt what do we do with our hurts what do we do with our hurts we dwell on that hurt ah uh, how could how could she do this to me we become plums you know what the plum is 
psychology plum means depressed they become sad we look down in the corner oh we become angry ah did she do that to me i will show her and teach her a lesson angry or depression no my brother my sister jesus is telling you come to me come to me abide in me you are tired aren't you burdened by that hurt come to me abide in me i go to jesus i make it a moment of prayer i offer that hurt feeling to jesus in jesus that hurt feeling is processed jesus is my main stem in him that dirt that stench of hurt feeling is processed from jesus there flows into me the fruit of love the fruit of love i have a fruit of love my hurt feeling vanishes i'm able to love him i'm able to love him we don't know what to do with our hurts to be uh, a lady a lady uh, the wife the husband shouted at her in the night she was very sad very very sad as all of us are do husband shout you don't do you <laughs> what do you do when your husband shout at you he feel sad or angry the whole night she cried early morning she went to the neighbor rang the bell and the neighbor lady came out so, you know you know what my my husband my husband did to me yesterday oh he shouted bad man that he is the, the friend lady uh, she would tell her oh is that what your husband did what a bad man that he is you know what my husband did to me day before yesterday oh he screamed at me Oh bad man both the women come to a conclusion all the husbands are bad is that is that a comfort is there a comfort no the comforter is the holy spirit every moment whenever anything goes wrong the comforter is the holy spirit the power from above is the holy spirit we turn to jesus there are moments we have when we are tempted what do we do if we keep that temptation he will slip and fall double is more clever than you and i are the moment some unholy unholy pleasure holds attraction to me i'm tempted immediately i make it a moment of prayer my temptation i make it a moment of prayer i turn to jesus i offer it to him from jesus there flows into me the power of self control to say no there are moments we are sad what do we do turn to jesus Make it a moment of prayer from Jesus there comes the power the power from above the power of the holy spirit the power of joy that's able to overcome all the sadness every moment my dear sister some brothers it's a it's a way of living a style of life turn to Jesus in prayer offer it all to the lord the lord will turn it all to our good the power from above my dear sister some brothers today we make a decision we can't continue to live like this right we can't continue to live like this we made a mess of our life others made a mess of our lives well we need a change we need a break we need a break and the break is the holy spirit and jesus is telling us wait and pray wait and pray until you are clothed with power from above with the spirit of truth with the comforter hallelujah 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 Hallelujah